Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending Thriving Through Chaos, Conflict, and Crisis. I'm Rob Napolitano. In today's macro environment, we face many headwinds today, and that impairs our ability to achieve our total return goals. We've got higher interest rates, we've got geopolitical tensions, and technology advancements that are moving way beyond the pace of our understanding. So for those of you here for the first time, I host this weekly session for one reason and one reason only, and that's to provide verified independent facts so that you can make better decisions, more intelligent, more informed decisions about the management of your assets and wealth while we endure these experiences of these headwinds. And these topics that I'm going to be talking about every week will circle around geopolitics, technology, and finance. Now, some of these topics you may or may not be aware of, but I'm going to bring them to you every week at this time. So why should you listen to someone like me coming in here and giving me a little bit of your time to do this? Am I going to be someone that's going to feed you something that you don't want to hear, or sell you something that you don't want, or what actually could I be giving you information that you don't know? And those are questions you could be asking yourself. So let me tell you a little bit about myself because I'm just like you. I'll give you a little bit of my history. You see, I've originated, modified, and traded over a billion dollars in transactions of mortgage debt and real estate transactions since 1998. It hasn't all been sweetness and light for the last 20 plus years. I struggled. And in 2008, I went into a chapter 13 and lost everything. And I had to find a way to survive and a way to win. So within my chapter 13, I went after two of the biggest banks in the United States, went after them, and I actually beat them in two lawsuits And I actually came out at a higher net worth. And that's how I got a look inside of how the real system works. And I realized that the average person, people like you and me, that we're basically flying blind today. And so I had to take action on my own. And I founded my company, Grit Partners, after going through that crisis as a means to capitalize on the opportunities that were presented in 2008, specifically in distressed real estate debt and opportunistic insurance assets. And I felt like it was a personal and professional responsibility now to share that insight, cut through some of the noise, bring you the facts back by data, and empower you to make intelligent, informed decisions. And that's what these briefings are all about. Because as I mentioned, we're living in a new investment environment. There's a lot of change going on out there, a lot of noise in the world, and it's creating a great deal of confusion and complexity. But with that, it brings disruptions, inefficiencies, and misalignments. And so... When those things happen, it creates substantial opportunities that are ready to be seized by those that are ready, those that are informed, and those that have a plan and ready to commit. Now, last week, I focused on the 2024 outlook that can be found on the website, as well as all these briefings will be listed on the website at www.gritrust.com. And today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what the system is, what's going on in the system and how the system is actually rigged against you. Uh, and rigged against your success. Only 30% of investors' expectations are actually being met. And what does that mean? It means we're not being served. It means that the information out there is lacking. It means that we're at a disadvantage. Here's a list of items that you need to survive and thrive. This is what you need moving forward to find your happiness, to find your success. And so... From a financial standpoint, you need this is the report card from the financial industry. And let me show you what these numbers are. And so as you can see, financial planning and traditional investment management are at the top of the list. And these are ordered in priority of demand by investors. These are what investors are looking for in order of priority. And the orange is the report card. This is how well the industry is serving the particular Uh, sector of the industry. So financial planning, wealth transfer advice, and investment management are the top three. If you look at where the real cutoff is, you can see that it's really the top six. The top six is where a majority of the traditional advisors are focusing on and not paying attention to the remaining pieces that investors need. Now, I put the same data inside of a graphic, because I like looking at pictures. And so what you see here, for those of you that like to look at pictures as well, 
Here's the same data where all of the demand, I put the demand by investors and their appetite in the uh, gray bars here. And then what you'll see is these pyramids, these brown pyramids is the response and the supply of services to these areas of the industry. So when we're talking about, you know, all these economic headwinds that we're facing, when we're talking about, you know, a system that's designed for, not for our, our success, this system is certainly designed for the haves and the have-nots, those that know and those that don't know, those that are aware and those that are not aware. And that's part of what we're trying to bring to you as well is the data that you may or may not be aware of, because this is what I went through. When I went through my bankruptcy, when I went through the internals of the banking system and saw how the system works and how it's set up for certain institutions to win and certain parts of, uh, of, of, the, of the society are made to lose. Okay. And that's what I'm bringing to you because I've seen it, I've beat it, and it's still out there. And you need to know about this as well. So that's an illustration to show you how lacking the um, the traditional, the status quo, how things are always done. It doesn't work today. Not with what's, what's going on. That used to work in the past, but I've even seen a statistic now where the advisors and the financial industry is now moving towards, instead of a 60-40 model portfolio split, now they're looking at it being three-dimensional, where alternatives have to be a part of a traditional investment portfolio in order to not only thrive, but at least survive through what we're going to be going through you know, facing these economic headwinds. Here's another great little chart um, that I found this week as well that I wanted to bring to you that goes in line with all this. This was a survey of 8,500 investors, 2,700 advisors, and it talked to them about what the expectations of portfolio returns are moving beyond 2023. What's the future look like? And it queried not only financial professionals, but also investors as well. And that's indicated here. The legend shows you that the orange dot is going to be for the financial professionals and the blue dot is going to show you where the expectations are of investors. So let's see what happened here in the U.S. that when queried, the financial professionals said you should expect as an investor only a 7% return moving forward. A 7% return. Now, some of you may be looking at this and saying, that's crazy because we just went through a year where equities you know, performed to the tune of 25%. How can we get down to 7% now? Well, let's go to see what the expectations are. The expectations from investors is that, well, we should be at least getting 15%, 15.6 to be exact is where they came out, that we need to see 15.6% and that's what our expectations are. And it's interestingly enough that the S&P on average since 1928 on average has produced 11.5%. So that's your, your median there. And so here we are that we just came out of 2023 with a 25% performance year out of, out of equities. And now they're saying only seven. Now, I bring this up, not because of what it says on its face, but what it's not telling us. What do they see? What do they know? What data are they working off of where they're saying only 7% where the rest of the investor community is saying something completely different? What do they know that we don't know? That's where I look at this. Where are they coming from? And again, going through what I went through, seeing you know behind the curtains and how things work, they work from a different set of data and rules. And they dump all the risk onto the unsuspecting, the unsophisticated capital. So this is part of why I bring you what I bring you every week is to highlight, unveil, stick your head behind the curtain to show you what they're seeing so that you can make the right moves and not be the dumb money out there that they're going to take advantage of, which is why you got to come back here every week because I'm going to give you piece by piece every week doing this stuff. This was another uh, case study that was done or a survey that was done at the end of 2023 
uh, with a with a number of uh, registered investment advisors, RIAs, and they queried their clientele to see what are they looking for moving forward. And interestingly enough, their biggest challenge, they said, 53% of the respondents said that achieving total return goals is going to be a challenge moving forward, which goes right in line with what we just saw about that 7%. How do we get ahead and hit that 15 or something even higher or even just trying to hit that 11% again? It's going to be a challenge, as most of them say here. And right behind that was the next challenge was how do you lower risk? and lower correlation asset classes. So that's a challenge that's going on out there. And that's what the consensus and the sentiment is with investors out there. So what are they looking for in order to make up that? So the percentage of advisors that looking to allocate into alternatives, here's the numbers. A large number of them are looking into private debt, another large number looking into real estate, followed by private equity and structured notes. So that's where some of the money is being moved right now, targeting this. So just to kind of recap what we talked about, the system is rigged. The system is working against you. And so in this in macro environment that we're living in now of higher for longer creates those five C's that we always talk about, chaos, crisis, conflict, complexity, and confusion. But as I always say too, in the midst of all this chaos, there's always opportunity. But the opportunity is only there for those who want to make those decisions that are right, that are committed, so they can decipher the opportunities that are real and which ones are actually right. And so these briefings that I'm doing every week are going to help you to decipher what those are so that you can come from a place of clarity and confidence to protect your own assets, grow your wealth in a safe and a sound, efficient manner. So with that, I'm here every Tuesday. Uh, I invite everyone to reach out to me. Let's have a phone call. Let's talk one-on-one. -on -one. It won't be any call where I'm going to be giving you, uh, selling you blue skies and get rich quick schemes. But for those of you that do want to put an effort in, committed to your family's generational success and want to put an actionable plan together, I want to hear you. I want to help you. I want to give you the ability to take control of that personal financial legacy. But it all starts with education. It's all here every week right in front of you. So with that said, if you have any other questions about what I've laid out here, as always, I'll always encourage you to reach out to me, contact me. I welcome a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Again, not to sell, but to be of service. So with that, I wish you all a prosperous day, and I will see you again next time. Take care, everybody.